Hey, everybody, what's going on? What's hot? What's hip? What's happening? What's shaking on your Friday? Zapcaster. I don't know if I've seen Zapcaster here, but he says snark. I think, I think, I think there's a place in the world for snark. Hey, how you doing? I'm going to tell you about mopeds today. It's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, Tom Gully show, 270 podcasts, uh, the merch store there, there is the actual coffee mug of producer Joe. Look at that in captivity. How about that? You can get stuff like that there, but mostly we want you to like subscribe and, uh, retweet and, uh, like, and, uh, follow and share and, all the stuff that's free, it's free. We are monetized now though, so if you want to, you can hit the little thing with the dollar sign, you, know, you guys know how to do it. And what else? Um, got a programming note. Monday, Monday, I think that the show will be on time. There's a slight chance that it won't. I, uh, I have to do some duties at the fancy radio station and those are going to happen as a 12.50, So I should be back here before five. I think it'll be on time. I think, I think it'll be on time. If it's not, I'll start it a little bit late or I'll just do it later, later, later in the evening. It's going to be a, an eclipse, you know, on Monday. Uh, the Kahuna is in the house. People saying hi to each other. The lovely and talented Diana O'Brien is here. She was at the pub late last night, you know. Um, folks saying hi to each other. There's a lot of highing going on and things. Uh, Jared is happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. Reverend says, big monies come first. Well, I don't know about that, but. I don't really know about that. I don't really know what I'm telling you about that. But uh, Jared says, Hi, I'm lovely and talented too. You really are. You really are. You're a, you're a handsome broth of a man. What does this actually say? I got to get up so early in the morning. So it's uh, available, let's see, 1250, 350, and 150. All right. Looking for the big network on Monday. The big network. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we lost Bob in the earthquake. No, we didn't. Uh, Joker, Joker, Joker. I saw there was an earthquake. It was a four point something on the New York, New Jersey area. And I tried to find out about it. But yes, it is always a cheerful chat room here, Jenna. We, we, we pride ourselves on that, as a matter of fact. No problem, Tom. We just survived the worst earthquake of all time. Uh, Diana O'Brien says, going to karaoke tomorrow night. What, hey, Diana O'Brien, what is your go-to karaoke song? Please, please let us know. Was the quake a harbinger, says Zapcaster. Well, Zap, let me tell you, when I saw the bulletin, it was on YouTube. It was what distracted me before I came on and I neglected the chat room, the pre-show chat room. And uh, I saw that Fox News had a live about that. And I turned and I clicked on it and they were talking about the stock market, not in relation to the earthquake, but just boring stock market talk. And then I looked in the chat. And there was a whole lot of these are the end of times uh, talking going on in there. So, you know, uh, Hugh says, hey, Tom. Hey, Hugh, how you doing, brother? I can be your New York City correspondent. There was an earthquake. That's it. <laughs> Monday is the eclipse. Just a coincidence. Is it just a coincidence there was an earthquake three days before an eclipse? I don't think so. Uh, and it's New Jersey. There are some wild people. Yeah, there really are. Diana Ross Carpenters are anything that suits my voice. Well, I would assume that, but I thought maybe you had a 
had a, a, a go-to song. I, I knew a young lady that I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. That was her song. And to the point where if anybody else got up and tried to do that song, ooh, boy, did she get mad. Uh, Hugh says, no earthquake in the Midwest, so I got that going for me. Yeah, I mean, I hope everybody's okay um, and stuff. But uh, four, <laughs> Chris Christie just stumbled. Zach, okay, Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. Let me see here. New York, Earth. Quake. I, I don't think they get that many here. It's a magnitude 4.8. Um, experiencing aftershocks. Um, they felt the shaking. Uh, and that was not that long ago. Um, so, but there are a lot of end of times people going crazy. Going crazy. Zap Caster says, great song considering whatever will be, will be. The future's not ours to see. Que sera, sera. The Red Wild Bill says, speaking of songs, I miss the condom song. Would love to hear the condom song. If we have time at the end of the show, I will play the condom song. Uh, that may have been Chris Christie falling off. The, well, yes, it might have been. It was terrifying. A lot of bottles rattling. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I use cans like I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've waited long enough. We are monetized. Do that if you want. But I'm about to tell you about mopeds as soon as I open my thing. I, uh, you know, have to have my thing open to do mopeds. <sighs> You know, they still have mopeds. They, they, there's some of them that have little, like, car shells around them now, but you don't see them as much as you used to, you know. So at its basic core element, a moped is a small type of motorcycle, generally having less stringent licensing requirements than real motorcycles or automobiles. And uh, I'll just show you. The first mopeds were actually uh, bicycles that had an engine on them to drive the, the train. Like that, that, that thing there, somehow. I think that that one's got the front wheels or something done up for the moped. But it was just a bicycle with an engine attached to it. And uh, the moped term was first coined by a Swedish journalist, Harold Nielsen, in 1952, way back there in 1952. And it's a combination of the Swedish words motor and peddler. And uh, so, moped. There you go. Um, it now only applies to low-power vehicles. But pedals were on some of them so that you could actually pedal your moped without the engine being on it. Uh, yeah, so the earliest mopeds were bicycles, as I mentioned, with a helper motor, usually on the front wheel. They were actually at the time called cycle motors because it was before 1952 and the, the term came out. But the most... Biggest game changer, I think. The first one was was a UK company called Cycle Master. And they had a better design than everywhere else. This was a complete powered rear wheel, which was just substituted for the bicycle rear wheel. So they would sell the engine and the chain and the bike wheel, and you would put it on your own bike. Okay? So... They made bigger ones that were called auto cycles, but uh, some of them were originally just, you know, powered down motorcycles. Um, in 1977, the Vienna Convention on Road Traffic considered moped any two-wheeled or three-wheeled vehicle 
fitted with an internal combustion engine having a cylinder capacity not to exceed 50 cc's, which is really, really small. Now, one of the coolest things about mopeds, by the way, there's one behind me here. It's a pretty cool one. One of the coolest things about mopeds, uh, all these mopeds I'm going to show you are pretty much from the 70s, although this particular model sold from the 70s all the way into the 90s. One of the coolest things about them was the fuel economy. A fuel economy, excuse me. Uh, mopeds could get like 100 miles per gallon. And, uh, you know, that's not too bad. Um in the United States, the EPA allows for a certain amount of emissions, you know, like they do everything else. But uh, moped safety, safely riding a moped mostly requires the same safety as riding a motorcycle. Um, it is at a lower speed. <laughs> You're driving on a sidewalk a lot of the time. So it's not as uh, bad, but you're supposed to wear bright clothes and wear a helmet and all that. Uh, mopeds have been tuned for higher speeds and people have been known to race them. Um, you know, but those aren't nearly as, as safe. Um, the average maximum speed for a moped in uh, Europe was uh, 45 miles an hour. And... Uh, not many people illegally tune these. Now, there's rules and regulations that govern the moped. And I could read you all the various countries. You know, we have some Canadian people here. Canadians have huge regulations of what is a moped. Uh, what they call a uh, limited speed motorcycle. No more than 3.1 cubic inch engine or displacement of 1.5 kilowatts does not require clutching or shifting after the drive system is engaged so you can only have one gear has a maximum speed of 43 miles an hour weighs more no more than 209 pounds not including the fuel or the batteries the wheels have to be 10 inches in diameter or more the vehicle has to be registered licensed and insured for road use the operator has to have a driver's license Operator has to wear a helmet. And in Ontario, there's even more restrictions for you fine Canadian people. Uh, in the United States of America, prior to the 1970s, which for people my age, mopeds exploded out of nowhere and then everybody had one. I mean, everybody and their brother had a moped. And you especially had one if you weren't old enough to drive yet because you did not need a license to have a moped back in the day. So prior to the 1970s, the use of mopeds in this country, the United States, was relatively rare because there were so many legal restrictions. And... Uh, in 1972, a guy named Serge Seguin, who wrote his master's thesis on the European moped, got two mopeds and a small amount of money from a French company to promote mopeds. After lobbying Congress on the fuel efficiency, that 100 miles a gallon, he was able to get more than 30 states to devise a specific vehicle classification for mopeds. And these were produced by U.S. manufacturers like American Machine and Foundry. Uh, that was a big one. AMF, oh boy, did they make a lot of mopeds. Mopeds have very small engines and could not exceed 30 miles an hour here in the United States. But what they could do was run up to 220 miles on one tank of fuel because of the huge energy crisis in the 70s mopeds became popular with more than a quarter of a million people in the united states owning one in 1977 but then gas prices went down and the, the popularity began to fade because uh, people started making fun of the mopeds um, there's a whole bunch of legal definitions and names from state to state moped motorcycle motorbike motorized motorcycle motor scooter scooter go ped motor driven cycle you name it a moped speed generally in the united states cannot exceed what i mentioned 30 miles an hour on level ground even if it's capable of going faster in a few states this is 20 miles an hour or 25 miles an hour and 
that 3.1 cubic inches is pretty much universal as well. Um, it, Kansas, however, allows 7.9 cubic inches, so they ain't messing around. Some states require pedals, others do not. So uh, they, have, they had a thing in the UK called the sports moped, which was a super high performance uh, derivation of the moped. It was aimed at 16 year olds and uh, it was sort of created to circumvent a government regulation aimed at getting young motorcycle riders off the road. So it was a law called the 16er law and uh, they managed to skate this law by having lesser powered, higher performance motorcycles if that makes any sense. Uh, it may have been a smaller cubic inches, but they were souped up in every other way, including fuel injection and everything else. So uh, that's kind of the thing. Uh, a few of the popular brands, Moped. This one here I'm showing you right now is a Honda. Uh, there was this guy here, which is a Yamaha. And that's looking pretty motorcycle-y to me. That does not look like what I knew as a moped. This, however, does. And this was a very, 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 very popular moped called a Moby. And I guess they're still driving them. Uh, I haven't personally seen any mopeds. In, 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 I, man, every now and then I'll... I'll see somebody cruising down a sidewalk on one of them. I'll go, you know what? All right, you're, you're 13, you're 14. You and your girlfriend want to go to the pizza place, whatever it is, get on your moped and go, you know? I imagine, uh, because everything nowadays is um, super regulated, I imagine they've found ways to make it so that, you know, you can't ride them anymore. But uh, I, I do remember, man, oh man, when I was in like junior high school, all the cool kids had mopeds. I absolutely, the, you know, uh, <laughs> they, they had the, the coolest mopeds of all time. And I didn't have one. I was never going to have a moped for two reasons. Number one, I had a bike and I rode my bike everywhere and I didn't live that far from that many things that I needed a moped. Second of all, when I got to be about 14 years old, I, I was going, why would I get a moped when I'm gunning for a car in a couple of years? Uh, not, not into that. They look dangerous to me too. It's just me. I was looking as I uh, went to get my thing. There are mopeds that you can buy now. Uh, there's one here. It's an adult 50cc, which is that 3.1 cubic inches. $659. There's a uh, Oi Bike moped style for $1,200. But I see this one here. It's a wholesale 2023 Um there's other one. There's a Torino here for eighteen hundred. There's a Tau Tau, which is six hundred bucks. Uh, I don't think I'd pay twelve hundred for a, a moped. But there's one here. It's on sale in, on uh, Alibaba, and it is a four wheel electric car mobility scooter, and it's got one door on the side here, and I think it seats a couple of people. Uh, let's see, there's the door. It's all, it's all, uh, wired up on the inside of it. It's, uh, it looks like a car from the front, only it only has one wheel in the front. And, uh, no, it looks like it's just a one seater. I guess you could get another person in there, but that's your moped. Like if it rains, it's got a windshield wiper and stuff, but that's 3000 bucks. And I know I probably have mentioned this before on the show. Uh, and I, I've been waiting for this. It's got to be 15 years now. It's got to be 15 years. What's this say here? Elio Motors took a millionaire in customers. Uh, 
yeah, customers are still waiting. Th this particular car has been getting deposits from people for I don't know how long. And uh, this, I'm going to share the screen with you real quick. Um, this is, it's called an Elio. All right. And I have been waiting for them to start making these for I don't know how long. And this is going to blow your mind, this car. And they keep taking deposits from people, but they never manufacture it. It was a gas-powered car originally, and now it's electric. And it gets three days of commuting charge. Its top speed is 110 miles an hour. It's got a three-year, 36,000-mile warranty. And that's the three days of commuting is uh, 52 miles a day. And the targeted uh, manufactured standard retail price is $14,900. So the, the Elio G here is the gas. Do I have to share that? I guess they're not even advertising that anymore. Um, let's see here about... Where's the, where's the gallery? I want to show you pictures of this thing. Um, this car is made with all American parts. There's a bunch of uh, car guys that are involved, and in, it's not even giving me the features. What the hell's going on here? Press releases? It's not showing me any of that stuff. This takes me back to the actual original page. Okay, here we go. This is what they look like. Um... They've got two wheels in the front, one wheel in the back, and they seat one person. There's one door, and that door would be on the street side of the car. And uh, they call it a tandem. There's supposedly a way that you can seat a person in the back, but uh, it doesn't look that comfortable to me. Uh, it's got three airbags. It's built in America, in Louisiana, supposedly. I haven't seen any of them. Um, full down rear seat plus cargo space. Plugs into any standard 120 volt outlet for charging. There it is from the top. There's a view from the rear and to the side. And I've been waiting for this car for forever because I want one. I would buy this car. Uh, they don't have any pictures of the interior, unfortunately. Here's a picture of it running down the road. Want an Elio? Get Insider. It's so you can actually put a deposit down on this, which I guess a lot of people have, but they haven't built any cars yet. <clears throat> you see them at car shows and everything else, and it also is, is pretty wired up on the inside. Uh, but it's built with existing parts. It's, they, they don't have to manufacture any of their own parts whatsoever. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to I'm trying to find the uh, gallery. So there's pictures of the inside of it that, may, that are really pretty cool. But uh, I can see here their website hasn't been updated in 2024. And there is an article that I saw that says, Elio Motors took millions in customer deposits, uh, promising 84 miles per gallon, and got, well, where are the cars? Nobody knows. Uh, some, some people have donated over 10 years ago. Um, <clears throat> so they would take a thousand dollar deposit and that put you in line to get your deal. They've, they've secured 65,000, uh, reservations and, uh, they didn't say anything since 2018. There's a guy posing with the Elio. It's, it's a tremendously good idea. Even even the gas-powered one. Uh, let's see. This says it's got a photo gallery. Let's see. Come on, man. Is that still... I'll have to share the screen again, I guess. I guess I'll have to share the screen again, I guess. But I've been waiting for this car for forever, and they just, they're not building any. I don't know whether it's a scam or what the regulations. I don't know. They did say in some states you'd have to get a motorcycle license. license. So this, this was published in 2021, 84 mile a gallon, three wheeled car, less than $7,000 at the time. Um, let's see if we've got any pictures of the interior. 
and uh, they're cool looking, you know, and everything else. There's a picture of the hatch. Here's a picture of the dashboard. There you go. <clears throat> so just one person. And uh, they just haven't put it into production. I think they may have gotten into it and figured out, you know what, this is going to cost way more than we thought it was going to cost. Uh, there's a picture of it going down the road. Who do, who would want one of those? Come on. Uh, you see them at car shows and stuff, but they haven't built any. They're pretty small. Uh, pretty doggone small. And then these are all prototypes that they're driving around in. This is the Barrett Jack collector car auction. So they've appeared there. They've appeared everywhere. Everyone's interested in this car. They just haven't built any. So anyway, that's sort of the history of the moped. Extremely European, came over here, second gas prices dropped, and they started regulating them. You don't see any mopeds uh, anymore, period. End of sentence. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Oh, let's see here. Uh, <clears throat> I can't tell or someone will steal it, Tom. Oh, good point, Diana. Uh, you seem to be losing sound. Nobody else is saying anything. Playing it at the end, that's one way to keep me here. Well, not the end, but in a minute. Uh, Bianchi, Bianchi Snark. I don't know what that means. Uh, and now for Tom's thing, yes. Oh, the chef and the crew are in the house on a Friday night down there in Union Station in Indianapolis making up the good vittles for everybody. Randy and crew, hi, how you doing? And have a good evening. Don't get in the weeds. That's a uh, restaurant term. Um, oh, yeah, we're monetized if anybody wants a super chat. Evening, chef. Everybody's saying hi. There's Aku. Hopefully, Aku has not fallen off anything during the earthquakes today. Honda had a moped. The key thing was they had pedals. Yes, it, it was hard to pedal a, a moped, you know, because it was so heavy. But you could do it, and it was worth doing a lot of times. Uh, there's the Honda. Yeah, that's right. Well, Bill, at least when you ran out of gas, you didn't have to push it. Exactly. Uh, dude, a helmet in the 70s kids were much tougher then. Yeah. Well, that's Canada, you know. We don't need no stinking help. Let's blame Canada. Vintage mopeds are expensive. Yeah, and by the way, most of the people I knew, their moped was always breaking down. It's always a fuel, fuel filter or something. Didn't some of them have two-stroke engines? You had to put the oil in? I don't know. Uh, Ribbonwild Bill says, I'd rather have a Vespa. Yeah. Here in the metro area, you can't drive any kind of motorized vehicle. Well, I'll be darned. A girl in our class when we were in the last year of secondary school had a scooter. I thought it was awesome. Her parents were better off than most of us. Yes, the rich kids, including mopeds. Pee Wee Herman bike. No, he just had a big bike. Did you have tiger tails on the handlebar ends? I never did. I never did. I wasn't that fancy. My my main bike that I rode growing up as a kid was a Sears bike. It was a like a banana seat, big handlebars. And then I got... When I turned 16, my dad bought me and my little brother these really expensive Japanese racing bikes called Nishiki. And they were awesome bikes, but I was like, man, I want to be on a car. Oh. Rim Wild Bill says, but I will say it keeps the party goers off the sidewalks on the weekend. <laughs> Zapcaster, I had the tiger tail on my car antenna. Hey, now. We used to sell Rokita, Chinese brand. Just like the Tao Tao. Awesome. Reverend Wild Bill says, I believe it was from Exxon. <laughs> Aku says, I got lucky with the cheap e-bike. Thing couldn't go over 32 kilometers per hour um, without a steep hill. Cop pulled me over, claiming I went over to the post to 50 kilometers. I had to flag down another cop who looked up specs to get out of the charges. Yeah. 
I have a Honda Helix scooter. I love driving it around. Scooters are fun. EV is cobalt stripping the oil production. And then after the battery fails nightmare, where do you put it? That's just it. Is there, you can't dispose of them. Reverend Wild Bill says, I would buy that car just for doing errands. Yeah, the Elio. Come on, man. Looks like an airplane without wings. Yeah, it's a cool car. Ammonia exhaust is green. Better tech. Look at that. It's awesome. I know. And we all want one. I think they either, I, maybe it's a combination. They overpromised on, you know, this car isn't going to hardly cost you anything, or they didn't realize what it was going to cost to build a factory. And robotics or union labor, or whatever it is. I know that when they first started, they had a plan where you put down a deposit and then whatever amount you, you set your, your you get a gas card and whatever amount you put into the car, you would add 10% of that onto the bill and that 10% would go to Elio to help pay off the cost of the car. Well, then some but he probably figured out, like I did in two seconds, this car gets 84 miles to the gallon. When they're, they're not going to be filling up at a huge rate. Uh, Kahuna says there's several mods you can do to 50cc scooters nowadays to get from the 30 miles an hour up to about 55. I'll bet. How much does it cost? Well, the E version of it costs $14,900. That's the targeted price, uh, US. But... The original gas version was $7,000, but that's got to be 15 years ago now. I mean, it's been such a long time that I've been following this car and nothing. Gully heads unite. Zapcaster says, Tom Gully. <laughs> okay. It would have to be blue. Okay. Car looks like a Can-Am Riker. It does a little bit, a little bit. Uh, mopeds almost eliminated the whole, <laughs> yeah, there's a joke about mopeds and the girlfriend. I can't remember what it is, but everybody used to tell if you run out of gas, you should have pedaled harder. Exactly. I started off with a Honda sport 50 CC scaled down motorcycle. I had a Honda 50. We, we rode it on our farm like crazy. I wrecked on that thing so many times, but you, you weren't going fast enough to hurt yourself. E-bikes are ubiquitous now, at least in the city, along with all the other micro-mobility gadgets that zoom all over the place, giving users concussions. Yeah, I've seen those e-bikes. <clears throat> and I think Segway has a an e-bike or something. They have an office here in Dallas. Uh, and now for the condom song. Okay, okay. Um, the new way to do business, make a bunch of promises that appeal to venture capitalists and earn your money up front instead of selling to customers. Well, there's, I can't deny that. Okay, let me see if I can get Wild Bill made happy by playing the condom song. This is a song that was done by me and a friend of mine for the Bob and Tom show back in the 80s. Uh, long time ago long time ago and uh i have played it on the show i apparently will be playing it tonight let me see here oh come on you piece of junk okay come on all right well all right here we go this is uh me and a friend of mine Back in 1987, 8, 9. And uh, a song, we won a big song contest. We won several of their song contests, and uh, this is one of them. It's actually fine because I want to play this song anyway. This is uh, uh, a song from uh, Kurt Connor and Tom Gully and their band called The Rubber Band. The Rubber Band, okay. Uh, these gentlemen won... Um, one of our song contests a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, they've ne returned, uh, and uh, this is a, a new piece. I think you might enjoy this. Uh, I'm just going to play it for you right now. This is uh, the rubber band, actually, Kurt Connor and Tom Gully and their rubber band on Q95. One, two, three, in a package. Hey, condom. 
That's uh, Kurt Connor and Tom uh, Gully and their rubber band. Very good. Their uh, new tune called The Condom Song. <laughs> Appropriately enough. Uh, Thank you, gentlemen. Endorsement uh, there uh, for... Mm, safe sex, I guess. I guess, or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, interesting well. approach to it. I think very <laughs> clever. Uh, thank you, fellas. Uh, Certainly. This is Q95. <laughs> you're, with, you're with Bob and Tom. Mon. <laughs> Mon. We'll be back Mon. Chica Mon. Seven. 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 Yeah, uh, enjoy that. Uh, that won't be played again for quite some time. <clears throat> yeah, my current employers probably wouldn't be thrilled. That uh, was a long time ago, and you know, you do what you do, and you know, and stuff. And what side is that on? No, there we go. There we go. That's the side. Is this the? I, I should really cut this tonight, but I'll be too tired. That song will put a grin on your face. Yes, it will. It it certainly will. It was fun. Well, good. I'm glad everyone enjoyed it. I, it was a long time ago. We won another song contest. We won several song contests, and we never got the prize. One of the prizes was like, I don't know, hundred hours at a recording studio and every time we tried to use it they wouldn't let us and they were busy and and then that was bad for them because we were in advertising we were you know that we were in the we use recording studios business so play monday maybe no no it'll be long then you grew up well, i don't know if i grew up or not but we just didn't do any more songs we just never got the prize. It was there was all these you know big prizes to win the contest, and we won them. Now, really, truthfully, the prize was that everybody we knew listened to Bob and Tom, and so we were famous for a month or whatever. Uh, Tom's one thousandth subscriber special. He's going to do a, a live version. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I haven't gotten any, uh, let me see something here. Okay. Any super chats today. Wow. It's, it's Friday. Take it Friday off. It, 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 put your wallet away. It's Friday. Come on. Let's just all kick back. You know how I love these Friday shows. Um, 
I thought more people would have moped stories because there was always that one kid that would wreck his moped and like break his leg or do some stupid thing with it. I remember a lot of kids having mopeds and they drove them around and everybody came over and gathered around them and oh, isn't that cool? And then like a month later, they weren't driving them anymore because they were broken down and they seems to me like they broke down all the time. A lot of followers didn't even know about the song. You all are welcome. Well, they don't know about a lot of the songs and the past uh, song clips and clips of things and I really haven't played a lot of that. Uh, maybe I should. Maybe I should, but not today. Not today, because I closed my music playing software that was cumbersome and uh, inconvenient for me to open up, but I did it because Reverend Wild Bill made a request and... Um, did you guys actually write that song? Because I've heard it. Wow. Uh, yeah, we wrote that song. <laughs> I, I don't think you sing that song unless you wrote that song. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody else is going to sing that song. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we wrote it. We wrote it. We wrote a lot of other songs, too. We wrote that. And now, what do we have to show for it now? I mean, I would hear it all the time. They played it a lot for quite quite a bit of time. I would hear it like when I was filling up with gas coming out of somebody else's car. I'd hear it. I'd hear it all over the place. And I would want to go, that's me. That's me. Everybody, that's me. But I did. Phone lines are open at 972-994-6822. And the music lines are closed. There's no more of that. We won't be having any more of that this evening. I feel kind of bad. I feel like I should have more moped stories for you. Let me, let me see if I can find out a little bit more about the moped. Uh, oops. Yeah, there we go. The age of the moped. It's... Uh, Gone, but not forgotten. You know, there's just a bunch of technical articles about what's the difference between a moped and a... I want a nostalgic moped thing. Guys, guys who drove mopeds always wore sweatpants. Like expensive Adidas sweatpants. Because it's just part of the being the rich, you know. It's, it's one uniform. It's one package that was, was they had back in the day, I guess. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Encore. Encore. Yes. Aku says, uh, mopeds and bikes weren't popular in my area. Very rural here. Well, you know, farm kids are driving tractors and real stuff. <clears throat> and probably... If it is like in Indiana, you you didn't have to be 16, nor did you have to have a license to drive a pickup truck in the course of farm duties, a lot of which occurred on your own property, to be fair, but uh, it was legal for you to do that. Gannies on mopeds. Grannies, maybe? Uh, Diana Bryan says, I heard it played here in the UK. No joke. Wow, now I know famous writers. <laughs> okay. Hamhead says he's late. Nobody's ever late to the Tom Gully show, Hamhead. And there is a Rico tonight, I think, and I know there's a replayables. So we will be out of here in around 16 minutes. On property, didn't need anything. Yep. My uncle, who has the same mullet since the 80s, well, he also had a lime green moped. Yeah. That was the other thing, is you saw a lot of, a lot of dudes that lost their license had to, had to ride a moped around. But, you know, there was always the guy who'd drive up to the football game on his moped, and all the girls would come around, and, oh, yeah, there's Jimmy 
feathered hair. He's got his moped with him. I used to really not like Jimmy feathered hair. I just... <sighs> Tom, would the fall of Blockbuster be a topic that would interest you? You know, it's interesting that you ask me that, uh, Aku, because, yeah, I was, I, I'm trying to think of... A, I was going to do one of video rental stores. Um, and Blockbuster would certainly be part of that because they, <laughs> you know, when video rental first began, there were no chains at all. It was just little mom and pop people that did these little stores and they were sort of family oriented and you knew the people that worked there and all that. And then the big chains started coming along and, and Blockbuster pretty much blocked out the sun for any other kind of store. So when they finally went out of business, that was it. But it's Friday night and it's 645 where I live. This is your prime go to the video rental store time right now. Right now would be the time. And it was a social event. You saw people you knew. You be on the make, you know. Zapcaster says, don't go breaking my heart. Elton John and Kiki D. I couldn't if I tried. I could restless. Maybe you're not my dad. Uh, let's see here. Teenage Dream by Katy Perry. One of my favorite songs of all time. Not even joking. You think I'm pretty without any makeup on? <laughs> Sweet Caroline by Neil Diamond. They've beaten that to death. I'm sorry. Uh, the last time I was in Little Five Points, the video store was still there, just down from Zesto's. Oh, boy. He still had VHS also, and he would sell. I ask because I know where one of the last block, boss, block, block, blockbuster stores are. There's one up in Alaska, isn't there? I think there's a documentary called The Last Blockbuster. But um, to get the really offbeat movies, the ones that I wanted, the cult films, like, um, oh, any of the John Waters movies, uh, any of the Herschel Gordon Lewis movies, any, oh, any of the Faces of Death series, uh, there was a garage. A guy had a house, and in his garage, he had just shelves, like bookshelves, and that's where they were. And all of his copies were just beat up on the outside. They were, they were just, beat up but the videos themselves were really good and that's where you went if you wanted the the good stuff toby mcgrovey says hey guys oh hey guys uh reverend wild bill says and speaking of little five savage pizza that's right gots to be loving you some savage pizza oh joseph art i got you i got you joe I just read your message, Joe. Let me see here. What? Oh, God, this stupid phone. I hate this phone. I hate all cell phones. Let me see here if anybody's... Nope. So, I got to get from downtown Dallas back over to here, and I can probably leave at 4.15. Man, if I'm lucky, I'll be back almost before 5. That means I'm going to be prepping the show before I leave. But I think I can make that happen. Just be on alert for Monday. There's a slight chance. Oh, the kahuna with a super chat. Thank you. This is to save this to show from a super chat free episode. I appreciate that. 
Oh, we didn't get shut out. We scored one run. We got beat 13 to one, but we scored a run. Uh, Akumugan says, I keep thinking of buying it if I won the lottery just to keep that part of history alive. Yeah. Well, there was another big chain too, but there was Red Giraffe. There was uh, E-Meat Stream from the road. The Reverend Wild Bill is kicked in for a dollar. He says his was for the song. One dollar for the condom song. Well, that's, that's about the going rate. Uh, that'd be about the going rate, yeah, for a request, I suppose. Or if you played it on a jukebox or whatever. I don't know. Mm. No idea what's for dinner tonight. Not burgers. I'll make a couple burgers. Yeah, just, I'll just take a knee, make a couple burgers. I would give more, but I live in early poverty. Oh, that's okay. Well, Bill, don't worry about it, man. Don't you guys worry about it. It's Friday night. I guess that makes it all right. And you say, baby, have you got enough gas? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Little red moped. Baby, you're much too fast. Uh, get your vegetables in. Yeah, do that. Get them veggies in. Get them veggies in. I am so happy that we're monetized now that, that it just doesn't matter. It's, it's so good to be monetized. You know, when you're not monetized, all the other shows look at you funny. You know? They just they give you one of those looks. Uh, on the bright side, you used to do this for free. That's correct. <laughs> That's 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 three dollars. I'm three dollars richer than I would be a month ago. My boys look forward to Friday or Saturday night video choosing. Bless them. Yeah, you went and you chose, and hopefully they had seven or eight copies of the hot movie, so that when you got there, there was one for you. Uh, there were things you'd you'd say. Okay, you they remember that list that you'd leave. You would put your name on the list for that movie everybody wanted. And they'd call you up when it was available. Um, Terry Nee says, now you can buy ice cream. By the way, guys, the ice cream man has been coming to the front of the house like 45 minutes after the show's over, which on one hand is great because it doesn't interrupt the show. But on the other hand, it's like, really? 7.45? Really? Uh, Toby McGroby with two Canadian dollars says, get them veggies in. Yeah, Zap says you can eat every day instead of every other. I'm still on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Reverend Wild Bill says $3. That's a Choco Taco. Hey, look, Choco Taco, that's two Choco Tacos probably. Where I get mine, premium ice cream, says Toby McGraw. Yeah, not just ice cream, premium ice cream. Uh, David Lee Roth, ice cream man. Dixie cups, oh baby, and push-ups too. I'm the ice cream man. Uh, I heard some people uh, that were uh, wondering about this recently here on the show. And I'm going to have to now um, show them just exactly what it is. Taco is. God, I hate this. All right, I'll just share the screen right here. I'll show you what a Choco Taco is. Those of you who do not know, who've never experienced the joys of a Choco doc Taco. So, okay, that's better. Wait a minute, did I make myself teeny tiny like Vince the lawyer? Come on. Thank you, StreamYard. Thank you so much. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a Choco Taco. <clears throat> that's a Choco Taco. So it's a waffle cone that's like coated at the top there with peanuts and chocolate. And then on the inside is vanilla swirl uh, chocolate. 
thing. It's that's a Chaco Taco. Let me tell you something. It is amazing. You ain't lived till you have a Chaco Taco. Is all I'm gonna say. I'm closing the phone lines now. Uh, let's see. We had a video shop right next door to our chippy. So they were really spoiled. Oh boy, I'll bet you. Chaco Ta Taco Tuesdays, half off. Yes, here in Texas, we have Taco Tuesday. What have we learned tonight? We learned a little about mopeds. We learned a little about my dumb song. We learned uh, Friday's not the greatest super chat day of all of them, but we don't care because everybody needs a break on Friday night. Uh, Zapcaster says, yes. Akumugan says over in China, they have a massive crackdown on the mopot heads and e-bikes. Just grabbed them. People started buying electric wheelchairs to get around. Wow. Chaco Taco. Mm. Sorry. Chaco Taco. That's better. Um, looks lush. It's so good. It is so good. The, the waffle cone part of it is um, kind of soft. It's not, you're not going to bite into it and have it shatter. Like it's not hard. And it just, the, the, oh, let me start it. Looks lush. That looks like something you would have with a witch doctor. <laughs> I was spelling it wrong. Well, you know, as long as, as long as you eat it right, who cares if you spell it wrong? We got about four minutes here. Till we got to be out of this joint. There's a replayables on. I think there's a Rico. Can someone check on the Rico for me, please? Lyndon says, have a good weekend, all. Same to you, Lyndon. And again, programming note. Uh, let's see. Don't feel embarrassed about your songs. Listen to Todd's horrible shoehorning, formerly Scott and Todd. Oh, yeah. I, I, I compared to his songs, mine are brilliant. Mopeds and 7-Eleven Burrito. You're going to need a moped if you eat a 7-Eleven burrito to get home faster. I'd rather have a Choco Taco over a Klondike bar. Me too. I, although I, 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 I do like a, a peppermint patty. I've been obsessed with those Ben & Jerry's pints, the Netflix in chilled ones. I wish I never tried one. Um, Rico at 9 Eastern. Thank you, Aku. Uh, so you got your pl replayables at 8. Eastern and then Rico at nine. And I uh, went through a period of Dole strawberry bars. They got real straw. Oh man. I, I was buying a box of 12 and it wouldn't last me two days. Can't wait till it's ice cream weather here in the UK. Wild Bill says, I'd rather have a cyclone. Uh, I don't see anything on Shuli. Okay. Well, I I think it's going to be at 9 Eastern. But I'll see you over on Replayables. I got to get out the George Foreman grill, make some burgers. You guys have been great on this. Our first monetized week. Sorry I'm so low energy today. I'm super tired. And uh, it's Friday. It's a Friday show, you know. Uh, but I got to say, you guys are the best, the very best, always awesome. And um, maybe it'll be video rental. I mean, Tuesday's my biggest night for some reason on this show. So I think I'm going to stay video rental stores for Tuesday night. And uh, with all that being said, the only thing left to say is, till next time. Have a good weekend, and we will see you next time.
got out of my pain. 